So my mistake was the complacency to think that this will last forever. This, the whole episode with the cannabis. It happened. There are repercussions. Everything happens for a reason. What has swimming given you? Hey, Joseph, welcome, man. I was just thinking, you know, you're, you're, you're only 28 years old, right? And, you know, you spent all your life in water. It's just strange to say the word retired. It is extremely strange. I think I've had quite some time to mull over this moment or think about it, process it. So right now, when I hear that word, it doesn't take me aback as much. But nonetheless, if you dedicated your whole life to something, yeah, stepping into another phase or another chapter, whichever you'd like to coin it, is definitely both scary, exciting. There can be actually downsides to winning an Olympic medal. But one of the things is you become famous. Suddenly you walk down the street, it's different. People call you, you know, they want to sponsor you and you're modeling and whatnot. What's this jump like, this life? To say it's overwhelming actually doesn't do it justice. It's a whole different world. And in times like that, you look for like a mentor or someone who's been in those shoes before in order to guide you and then you take it to the next level. There's none of that. No, you don't have that in Singapore. So I had to figure out a lot of things by myself with the help of the people around me. And sometimes, or most of the time, it didn't go according to plan. You know, it was more negative than positive. But on the flip side, you can have a thousand negatives and you have that one positive. And I still consider that a success because you're still moving in the right direction. It's like Thomas Edison in the light bulb, right? Athletes often, when they win a gold medal, they actually go into a little depression. And that depression is caused by the fact that your whole life has been focused on chasing something. And then at 21 years old, right, you got it. And then you think, now what? So I was wondering what happened to you when you won gold? There are two components of that, right? You got the chemical side where it's, okay, you're getting just pumped with endorphins and dopamine and everything from working out and experiencing that high, right? Athletes, we all have addictive personalities. Like that's how you get to that level. So you're always chasing that high, but like life, things always don't work out that way. That's one. And two is routine and fulfillment. So you're used to doing everything, operating at such a high level. Go, 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 go. That's your norm. Now what happens when you take a fish out of water? Things change. And if you don't have an area where you can focus, that kind of drive and attitude and that fulfillment. I mean, things can go quickly, like sideways. Did you lack the same focus or drive that you had had before? i say the first year, yes. Second year, I was playing catch up. And then the third year, I was just overthinking. What mistakes do you think you made after you won your gold? So my mistake was the complacency to think that this will last forever because I'm so far ahead. Now that not many 21 year olds can can understand it, add on ego, add on pride, add on that like things I see, like I'm, I'm never gonna be shot down attitude. Like, yeah, that's a recipe for complacency. So that's one of the lessons that I learned and I'm gonna continue to remember that in my next phase. So how did this complacency play out? In the sense that you didn't practice hard enough or you just became overconfident or what was it? Overconfident, entitled actually would be the direct way to put it. Um, I felt like I didn't need to work as hard anymore because I got to that level. And now looking back, yeah, the entitlement might have been one factor. My dad was really worried um, going to Asian Games or even Worlds in 2019. Um, with the form I was in, he used to send Eddie long emails. You've seen the way my dad emails, all in caps. And Eddie would just call him and be like, Colin, look, Joe's sole mission on this planet was to win an Olympic gold medal. And he emphasized an Olympic medal, one. Whatever happens after is his choice. But the whole reason he's here is because to win that one medal. So now you're thinking about steps ahead. Of course, we're in or past that, right? But can you actually blame the kid for letting off, uh, letting off some steam or letting, taking his foot off the, the gas pedal after he's accomplished his lifelong dream at 21? I think that helped put things into perspective as well. But yeah, uh, entitled and also I think deep down, I accomplished what I wanted to. 
So explain this being volatile in the pool. The way I trained was, you know, I'm a very volatile person in the pool. You ask any of my teammates that, right? And doing it, that at 21 versus doing that at 24, 25 is a whole different game. And I refused to change or see things differently. I refused to adapt. So I felt like if it ain't broken, don't fix it. I think everyone going there should have the same mindset to be the best. And if one person doesn't hold the same sort of mindset or motivation or drive, don't be there. Because one, I don't think you deserve to be here. And two, get out of my way, you know? So that would in turn be vo vocalized into fights, like verbal fights or taunting. When you look at a team, the best teams in the world, you have every single team member keeping each other accountable. I didn't mean that in a personal way. And all of them knew that it wasn't a personal attack, personal attack on me and them. No, none of that. That's childish. But you have to understand that once you step in a place like Texas, for example, you're of a different caliber. And if you fly that flag high, you better live up to it. If not, no one's stopping you. The door is over there. So that's the kind of level we like to keep. Did you ever think of calling Michael for advice? First time I called Michael was my third year. The NCAA is after the Olympics. And this NCAA is when I was with Caleb. It was a 100-fly final. You know, I was like out of shape and not in the best spot, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm just very anxious. So I called Michael and I was like, Michael, how do you deal with all these, like, this, this scrutiny? And it, it almost makes you fall out of love with swimming. And he gave one very simple, simple sentence. He said, why do you swim? I'm like, huh? Why do I swim? He's like, who do you swim for? I'm like, swim for myself and my parents, um, people around me. He's like, exactly. You look up in those stands. Those are the people making the noise. Do you actually swim for them? I was like, no. I'm like, okay. Go figure. Good luck. <laughs> so Michael gave really good advice, but he wanted me to have to understand and learn in my own way. So let's come to maybe one of the more difficult uh, periods that you've been through. You know, this, this, the whole episode with the cannabis, right? So was it embarrassing? Was it humiliating? What was it like to go through that? It was definitely embarrassing and humiliating. Uh, at the same time, I believe that everything in life has its lessons, right? Everything happens for a reason. The truth of the matter is it happened. There are repercussions. And life goes on, you know? I'm lucky to be able to sit, to sit here and talk to you. But the most I would say is everything happens for a reason. Take the positives out of the negatives. Do you think that with great champions, you are a great champion, you are possibly our greatest sporting champion. Is there a certain level of responsibility that we expect about how they conduct themselves? Is that fair or is that unfair? I do think that athletes given the platform, I would hold myself to higher standards. Right. And I keep going back and forth with this one comment I saw online. It said politicians around the world, for example, they're embroiled in all, all sorts of sketchy things, right? We're human, right? But sometimes people forget that you know, things happen. Now, an athlete does that thing. And all of a sudden, the phrase of, oh, the athlete shouldn't be doing that because my kid looks up to that athlete. Now, the skeptical side of me will say this. It's okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Did we tell you to, did we tell you to have your kid look up to athletes? No, right? But you can't think that way. That is not the right way of thinking. That's defensive. That's, that's, I think it's stupid. The way I want to look at it is, okay, you know what? This person actually looks up to athletes, looks up to me, and I should hold myself to higher standards as well. Now, is that tiring? Is that tough? Yeah, sometimes. Does it make me miserable? No. Just because I'm tired, go get sleep, come back. You still have this platform, right? Tomorrow's another day. So make the best use of, out of this platform and leave that legacy that you want to leave. It's how you want to look at it. If you look at it all around, I mean, this life and water, I mean, what has swimming given you? It's given me the world, man. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of surreal to actually be going to the swimming pool and watching, spectating instead of competing, you know? The swimming pool is like your, your classroom, like, it teaches you so many things, not just about, you know, like the, the cliches, like determination, grit and all that jazz. 
it actually teaches you how to be like a better person. So I got all the people around like Serge, Eddie, Sonia, parents, support team around to thank for that. And without them, I would not be here sitting with you today. No, they've given me that opportunity, that chance to be that mouthpiece, to be able to freely express who I am in the water. All right. No judgment, no hesitation, nothing. Complete trust and love. And to like have to leave all that behind. Yeah, it sucks. But you move on to the next chapter and the greater calling. You'll climb another mountaintop. So yeah, really have to give all this to my team.